What makes a bad client? For most clients, the first thing that they want to run to is we have a community. We have volunteers. <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> we got you. Uh, I feel yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So how many volunteers do you have? For your Someone that wants to micromanage everything that you're doing? That's one. <laughs> like, I don't even understand that. Someone that know? has uh, champagne dreams with that. beer money. Yeah. Yep, beer they budget. see this, I want this, what is it? And then when you tell them the cost, like, oh. Uh, can we work something out? Or yeah, they want you to or, figure out a way to yeah. give them something that is like super out of their budget. I think, hold this. on, hold on. To be fair from a client's perspective. <laughs> I am being fair. <laughs> hey, Jay, I'm still on my, my sponsorship, okay? Uh, <laughs> and that's another thing that's we another get a lot too. Like they they, they too. love yeah, the sponsorship. I need to partner with something that I do and you need. Right. I'm saying. It's just, yeah, leave me alone. I love you, Shane. What has been one of your biggest nightmares lately. Listen, I'm just gonna put it out there. Something happens at every event. So oh, yes. I, I'm just gonna be real. Something something always happens. Give me one that like really you'll never ever forget this moment. <laughs> All right, welcome to another edition of the Social Proof Podcast. I'm really excited about this conversation uh, because um, events are hard, events are tough, and there's a lot of um, uh, a lot of people are afraid of events. You know what? I there's one thing I don't like about events. Let me share with you all from <laughs> my my entrepreneurial efforts. If I'm selling a book, right? I'll release the book online. And I'm like, hey, y'all buy the book. It's going crazy. People love it. Or I have a product I'm promoting saying that other people are enjoying the product that I'm selling. Mm -hmm. But with a live event, if <laughs> no one's there, mm -hmm. everyone knows that no one's there. No one knows. No one knows you failed in many things other than a live event. So from my perspective, uh, it's one of the scariest things that you can do. Um, so I wanted to have an idea of what makes a good event. Like I, I really wanna know um, moving forward because I'm a live event type person. So I found the best of the best uh, event producers. I, I don't even know what to call y'all. I'll just let y'all introduce yourselves. Uh, first, my sister. Um, who we've we just so cool she my sister but when she be in work mode I'm like <laughs> <laughs> like what happens where'd the love go <laughs> so we got Ash in the building what's up man hey hey how you feeling I'm blessed oh yeah. my gosh well introduce yourself and we're gonna get into this conversation um so my name is Ashley Miller um, I am the owner of BEC production which is an event production company we are based here in Atlanta and we produce uh, internationally as well. Internationally? You know that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, so what are some of the biggest events you've done? Um, well, one of my largest events is InvestFest, mm -hmm. um, which is an annual event that happens in August here in Atlanta. Um, we are almost close to 20,000 attendees uh, per year. Um, and that's just the attendees. We also have the marketplace, mm -hmm. which we have um, a little over 400 vendors, mm -hmm. um, small businesses and large corporate companies as well that come on board for that. And typically around 150 to almost 200 speakers. So wow. that's our larger event. Man, yo, you think you're somebody in Atlanta. So you walk <laughs> up to the security and I'm like, hey, I'm I'm speaking here today. <laughs> and they're like, I can't do it. I'm like, yo, but I know Ashley. We'll call her. I'm like, yo, what's all right? Everybody knows please. Ashley on event day, right? <laughs> Everybody. Well, thank you. We about to get into this. So you call so you're an event producer? Yes. That's that's what I that's my the title. title is, yeah. For layman terms, some people will say event planner. Some people will even say coordinator, which are very loosely terms used for layman language. Gotcha. But so, planner, yeah. coordinator, producer, same thing? No, I mean, to you, it would be the same thing. Right. So for a client coming in, I mean, I don't care what title you, you call it money. per se. 
than the wire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. So uh, we also have Tori. Uh, we haven't had a whole lot of interaction, but I've been at a bunch of your events. Yeah. And, uh, you know, the people sing your praises. So I'll let you introduce yourself as well. Hi, I am Tori Williams with Tori Williams Events. And I am also an event producer. I do large scale weddings, social events, parties, um, war shows, just pretty much everything. Yeah. What yeah. do you like doing most? Uh, parties. Why? That's my thing. I just like them. Not like, weddings? The art of it and all that? Just... I did weddings for like eight, nine years. It's a lot that goes into weddings. It's a little, don't get me wrong, to my brides. I love y'all. <laughs> it's a lot. It's, it's just a lot. You have to deal with people for about a year. Mm -hmm. um, you're taking on a lot of emotions mm -hmm. of the bride, mm -hmm. the parents, and everybody else. It's a lot more responsibility. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it was cool, but parties, a little less stress. Gotcha. Easier. Okay. okay. All right. All right. <laughs> uh, and then we have, so this is, this is where I was confused because I know you all, you two are senior event producers. James Company, they produce doing the production. So I'm trying gotcha. to make sure I get the vocabulary right. right okay. Right. So you will call yourselves what? So we're a event production, audio visual event production company. Audio visual, visual. event. Anything production. that you hear or see, we have to bring in that gear to make that happen. Got it. Oh, in yep. introduce yourself because you didn't say your name. Well, I'm James Daniel with uh, Event Audio Visual Services. Mm -hmm. We're an audio visual production company here in the Atlanta area. Okay. Okay. So I've been in business about twenty about twenty five years. Gotcha. Okay. And I am Lakeisha Ellison Trimmingham, also with Event Audiovisual Services. Mm, you got some yes. names on you. <laughs> 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 Hold on, Lakeisha, what? Ellison Trimmingham. I usually just use my maiden name, which is Ellison, because it's short. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So, um, did y'all start the company together? No. No, I started. I started the company in nineteen ninety nine. Oh, wow. I was employed for Marriott for about nine years. And I went from audiovisual director to event manager to sales manager, senior sales manager. Taking my bonus checks that I was getting from Marriott, saved it up and started the company in 1999. First, what was your first event? First event was actually a CDC event. My mm -hmm. first event was about 10,000 people. Your first one? First event, mm -hmm. right out the door. And I had about 30 concurrent workshops, where concurrent workshops where every every room had audiovisual in it. It was from you know projectors, microphones. Oh, but you were working at the Marriott anyway, so you understood. I was, yeah, I was work. I was no, I was working at the Marriott, but my first contract was the CDC. Was the CDC. Then I stepped away from the Marriott. Right, but I'm saying you understood how to do it from absolutely. doing events mm -hmm. at the Marriott. Absolutely. Though. Okay, got you. Yeah. Absolutely. And when did you come along? Uh, me on the other hand, it was a little different. Um, I came about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we're from South Florida. So um, I was in, uh, I was nurse, I was a nurse for 17 years in mm -hmm. Florida. My husband got a promotion, moved to Atlanta. I didn't want to come because I was very comfortable. I was forced to come. And I was like, okay, you know, I know James forever. He called me, he's like, um, okay, you're in town. Now you can come and work for me. I'm like, ah, no, I don't think so. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, I'll come help you out for a little bit till I find something else here. And 10 years later, we're rocking and rolling. And what's your sauce? What do you bring? Everything. Okay. Every <laughs> single <That's awesome>. thing. <laughs> I have about, I have like, it may be six titles. Yeah, I'm more. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, his executive assistant, um, logistics. <laughs> Um, accounts receivable, accounts payable, kind of relationships. operations, <laughs> you know, well, because it's a trust, you know, it's, it's a more of a trust thing, you yeah, know, when yeah, it comes absolutely. to clients and finances and everything. And he doesn't allow a lot of people in too much. So mm -hmm. because we've been friends for so long, he's very, very comfortable, a little too comfortable with me. So I take on a lot <laughs> and he takes advantage of that. So, gotcha. yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so I would, I'd, I'd be interested to know how you two ladies got into event planning. I'll start with you, Ash. Um, so my 10-year class reunion was coming up. Mm. And we had a committee that we put together, and I was a part of the committee. And I had been previ – my previous career was in property management. So um, I was with H.J. Russell mm. um, for my, the longest tenure of my event 
I mean, my property management career. And I had been in that for 10 years and it was like time for the next, right? Mm -hmm. So when I joined the committee and we brought all of the details together, looking for the venues and the planning and everything, and to see the joy on my classmates face was like a spark. Mm. I was like, oh, ooh, <laughs> I like this, you know, yeah. like butterflies and everything. And so then I went to Clayton State and I got my um, event management certificate or certification. And it has now been 12 years and wow. I'm still in the industry and I absolutely love it. And kind of, you know, just like Tori, um, I started in weddings, mm -hmm. love them, love my brides. Um, and I did that for six years. And now I'm over, you know, to the more um, conferences, seminars, masterminds world. But um, I loved weddings. Yeah. It was it was great. Um, but it's very emotional. You know, just like Tori was saying, you're taking on a counselor role. Mm -hmm. The um, time frame is much longer usually. And it's a lot of hand holding mm -hmm. versus, you know, this side. And, and just like Tori is saying, I could only imagine even with parties, um, it's less work. Yeah. You know, the, it's more of having a client. They're trusting your vision. And Tori is. You do amazing, beautiful, detailed mm -hmm. events. Um, and that's not my love language, right? Mm -hmm. That's not my, that's <laughs> like, I'm logistics girl. I'm like yeah. logistics operations, mm -hmm. um, efficient systems. Like that is my joy, not the flowers, the chargers, and you know, mm -hmm. all of that. That's all Tori. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you make it pretty and I got you on the logistics on the back mm -hmm. end and making sure everything flows correctly. So yeah, yeah. we need that's to look up. Started. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, that's yeah. what I was thinking. I was like, dang, that would be a powerful. Yeah, and most designers, cause I, I would even consider Tori a, a designer because she has the aesthetics mm -hmm. for the look of right. it. So that's another title again that we can, mm -hmm. that I'm putting on yeah. you. Cause I know that that is a title that yeah. you, that you use. Um, but designers, I have had a few to come to me and they want to, as you're saying, and do the partnership because when you, events are a lot. Mm -hmm. And you said that it's, it's a lot of details and it's certain parts of it that you love and certain parts that you don't want to touch. And so with some designers, they don't want to touch the logistics mm -hmm. of it, you know? And then for me, I don't want to touch design. I don't care about the charger plate, what the color palette is or anything like that. That's why I bring in teams to be able to do that portion of it because that's not my joy. And so Country. I don't spend time on it. So your company is full service, mm -hmm. meaning you handle all of that, but you have a team of people to do it. Yeah. I mean, well, that's that's with with any event. Right. Mm -hmm. So everybody plays a part. I I can't. So real quick. I'm sorry. If say say I'm doing an event, mm -hmm. I come to you. Right. And I don't have to worry about finding anyone else. No, we do all of the vendor procure okay. vendor procurement is what it's called. So, no, we source everything for the event. So. For a designer, right? If it was a gala or something like that, I would go to Tori mm -hmm. and say, hey, Tori, you know, I, I really don't want to do the design aspect of it. I need you to come on board. This is what we're looking for. This is what the budget is for that. <coughs> Tori would take care of that. And of course, we work along the process. Same things with, you know, James and Keisha. Hey, we ready for AV. This is this is the venue. Let's talk through those details. So again, for example, when we were talking about InvestFest, on top of all of the attendees, the exhibitors and everything we had almost a hundred vendors mm -hmm. so these are vendor providers right so we had a design team we had av you know as a matter of fact um eav was the av you know company um for us so all of those vendors that it takes security um first aid everybody they have to touch our company mm. touches everybody got it got it okay yeah. tori how did you get into the space um my story is a little different. I started off in hair and makeup and I was doing glam for brides and other clients. So I just kind of fell into it. So, oh, I was so you're already to... doing uh, makeup. Yeah, I was doing and makeup and hair. You have these brides and you're doing the so, makeup. So yeah, I had brides that I was doing <coughs> their glam for, for their wedding days and for these parties and things. And they would sit there and they would tell me all the complaints. And just things that they liked, things that they didn't like. And, mm -hmm. of course, I didn't think about it at the time. I was just going through, you know, just, oh, girl, okay, okay, okay. And then it wasn't until me and my husband got ready to get married. And then I it dawned on me, like, oh, that's what they're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so after that, um, um, a few months after me and my husband got married, um, his birthday was rolling around and I tried to use a planner to help me plan his birthday party and she didn't really do anything. 
So, and I had a little hiccup with her when I was planning my own wedding. So I just kind of stepped up and did what I already know, what I had been seeing anyway. Yeah. So it was just easy for me. Yeah. And it actually was my husband's best friend was like, yo, this is what you're supposed to be doing. Mm. So um, I just kind of dived into it. Just didn't think <clears throat> it would go this far, to be honest with you. Yeah. When I got into it, it was just, I kind of played around with it. <laughs> and I got my first client, <clears throat> which was, um, it was actually Kiana Watson. Really? Yeah, she was, we're friends. So um, <coughs> she wanted to do a party for her husband at the time. And I and planned how, how long his, ago was this? This was uh, 10, 11 years ago. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I planned this party, met someone else, and then it just took off faster than me. I wasn't mm. even really prepared for it, so I had to really catch up with it. Mm. So, how much you make off Kiana's party? I'm sorry? How much you make off Kiana's party? The first event? First one. $500. Five hundred. I didn't even know what to charge. To be honest oh, with you, I'm just being real. It was five hundred dollars. I ain't know what to do. I was like, "Girl, give me five hundred dollars. Pay for the stuff that needs to be done, and we'll just, you know." Jesus. I know that was a deal. <laughs> she called good. I mean, yes, like, yes. Think about it. What a deal. Ago, okay. How long did it take you to plan it? Um, it didn't take long. It took me maybe like a month. Right. So, I mean, it's a little side gig. Yeah, it was just a little little, Couple. little something on the side. I didn't know. You know, yeah. I was just really, oh, I done figured it out since then. I want to I wanna get into the money side of event planning because I want to understand and I don't know if there's a set model for it. So, I would imagine probably AV mm -hmm. is I have a price that I'm going to charge for an event to like i don't know if you just piece it together tell me how you charge how you price it <laughs> well i could tell you this most of the time av for some reason when it comes to budget it's the last thing clients think like about because we Relax. had this conversation i'm like <laughs> yes. it's the most expensive Ooh. most, 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 most expensive most, line could I could most expensive but then yeah. a lot of times by the time they get to audiovisual, mm -hmm. they're like we don't have no budget Oh, you're saying people front in the event yeah. first and then exactly and all these visuals all these visuals should be one of the first things because mm -hmm. it's it's such an important part right. of the conference. It can make or break your conference. Mm. Correct. But a lot of times they don't think about A V production and when it comes to cost until like the last thing. When and A V could down. be one one of the most expensive. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, so how do we price it? Like, I mean, what's a formula? How can I how can I if I want to do an event? How can I at least in my head start to calculate, okay, this is some of the things I can be looking forward to when someone's charging me? It's hard It's hard for you to probably price it unless you've done that meeting before and had experience mm -hmm. of doing that particular meeting and what you paid before. Um, because all pieces of equipment, you like you have stuff around the studios. This microphone is a rental cost. The stands is a rental cost. Right. Your camera's around here is a rental cost. The lighting is a rental cost. Labor. Labor is a rental cost. Mm -hmm. It depends on what you need. You know, if it's a couple hundred people, I know about 200 people, you need a certain size screen. Right. And that certain size screen, right. there's a rental cost for it. Then I know if the room is bright and it's far away, you need a certain lumens on the projector. And there's a rental cost for that as well. Dang. Okay. Yeah. Then you so. get into the labor. And of course, labor now, labor is expensive now, anything mm -hmm. that you're doing right now. Yeah. Inflation is real. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, on all levels. Even for event, like for yeah, yeah, like it's just yeah. people charging you or I mean the it's, people yeah, that's working, the labor. The like people working yeah, charging because yeah, labor is we, we, have we have contractors that we work closely with, so they're not really employees, even though we do have a few employees, but it's mostly contractors that we have relationships with. And their rates yeah. so went up. Yeah, we mm -hmm. can't really control their rates as much, but if we have a relationship, which we do with most of them, it's like, okay, you know, this is the budget for this. Can you work with me? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's still, it's every year, it's a, we, we just don't know what we're walking into. And as soon as, you know, COVID, after COVID, was over. Oh they yeah, everybody got rocket. Oh, they're trying to make up for the money. Yeah, oh, they're trying to make up. Yeah. I mean, even venues. I mean, yep. you see right, that. It, right. I mean, every yeah. in every aspect of. Mm -hmm. well, I always say line items, right? Which is what I go again. You know, the logistics mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. operations, yeah. right? So every event is a budget sheet for me, and it's like, how much money do you have, and how can we allocate those funds? But I mean, it's inflation everywhere. Labor is definitely one of them. You yes. know, and. For most clients, the first thing that they want to run to is we have a community. We have volunteers. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got you covered. Uh, I feel it. Yeah. Yeah. Is, uh, <laughs> so how many volunteers do you have for your community? Uh, for, us, because you, yeah. for us, they'll run to it and say, um, 
we're a nonprofit. Yes. Yes. Right. Right. And we're looking. You know, when the budget like, we're a nonprofit. Discount? Can you do this? Can you do that? And a lot of people don't understand because they see the price. Say we're a projector, right? Mm -hmm. They'll see the price that we're charging. You know, between three hundred up to fifteen hundred a projector. They're like, well, for the pro to rent a projector. Rent a projector, and okay. they want to know, well, I can go out and buy one. Well, no, you really can't go out and buy this projector. This projector cost me sixty thousand dollars. Right. And who's coming to set it up? At what time exactly. are they coming to exactly. set it up? Do right. they have all of the equipment? Are they experienced? I mean, it's right. just so many so different much, right. levels to who's it. And where's the graphics on yeah. that? Who's exactly. Right. The graphics. And, who's so. and then the distance, if it's yeah. 50 feet away or 200 feet away, you certain need a special lenses, lens. So. Like you got right. certain lenses here, certain right. lenses you need for right. close up shots, wide shots. Is, is, it, front, front, is it front or is rear? All of those things. What has scaffolding? You know, it's just, it's a lot. Is it going to be rigged? Yeah, yeah. It's gonna be like rigged. exactly. And rigging is a whole nother world. Yeah. So, <laughs> oh my gosh. So, yo, what's up, Social Proof family? So, I know you're watching the dope episode, and we'll get right back into it. But in the next two minutes, I want to teach you the number one mistake that's probably costing you over $10,000 in taxes. And then I'm going to teach you how to fix it. And at the end, I have a free gift for you. So, let's get right into it. So, the number one mistake that most people make, especially business owners, is they have the wrong entity set up. Like, Guys, LLCs do not help you save on taxes. So let me give you what I call my entity timeline so you can know when to have the, the best entity for you and how to save the most money on taxes, okay? So step one, before you have the business, I do want you to set up your LLC, but not for tax savings, for asset protection. So you can go to a, web, a free website like LLCUniversity.com. It's gonna teach you how to set up your LLC 100% free. Now you're gonna stay at LLC until your business makes over forty thousand dollars in net income for the year once your business makes over forty thousand dollars net in income for the year it's time for you to upgrade that llc to a s corporation s corporations actually help you save on taxes how much so well let's put it like this if you had an llc making a hundred thousand and i had an s corp making a hundred thousand you would pay over ten thousand dollars more in taxes than i would because i have the proper entity so once you make over forty thousand dollars in that income it's time for you to upgrade that llc to an s corp and then you're going to stay at s corp until you start making over over three million dollars in profit and then it might make sense to upgrade to a c corp but that's it guys llc where you start the business s where you make it over 40k c corp after three million dollars in profit if you want a free guide on this i'm going to give you my tax-free ebook 100 free and i'm going to be teaching a class breaking the ebook down for you all this 100 free but it's only for my social proof family so all you have to do is text the word proof to 312-847-2309 that's proof to 312 847-2309. Now let's get back to the episode. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So we go, so we actually went to the venue. We're doing a podcast summit at the Hilton. And we go into the venue and we're just used to putting light the lights on the floor. You just shine the lights. So James kind of shows me the difference between what it looks like if the lights are on the floor, just shooting the mm -hmm. stage, mm -hmm. or up at the top, and they're like kind of moving and stuff like that. So the guy that's doing <laughs> the walkthrough, he said, yeah, we can put a truss up there. And James like, yo, that, that little truss is gonna be expensive. Mm -hmm. And I think it, I think James said, yo, it's probably gonna be about 20, 25,000. The guy confirms, he said, yeah, it's about 25,000. Mm -hmm. I'm like, this ain't for not no lights though. This is right. just <laughs> a trust at the top, 25,000 in one space. Right. Mm -hmm. I'm like, oh my God, right. I need to buy a hotel or something. This <laughs> is crazy. See, and, and that's the that's the next thing that clients mm -hmm. think too. I can just buy it. I can just, Because yeah. you have to think what all it takes to put that trust up, like how many pieces are there? How many um, hands do you have to have for it? Mm -hmm. Excessive. Look, no, you gotta it's, be it's not. You have to then, be certified. Yeah, all of those you gotta things. Have you need insurance. a lift. You have, you have to have insurance. insurance. Yeah. They're stored. Like, and you have the, these are items that are stored also, which are taking up square footage. That's just like if you were to say to use this room, right? Mm -hmm. How much equipment you would have to have in here, or how much more square footage would you need if you wanted to start bringing in different color chairs, right? Yeah. Like, right. oh, mm -hmm. you know, we're doing events in the space. We have white folding chairs. Well, what if they want black? Or you're not saying, oh, you know what? I can get that money. Let me go and buy black. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Where yeah. are you going to put 
150 black chairs now because right. you already have yeah, 150 <laughs> white. Yeah. Now you need more square footage. Now you have another bill for storage. So. And then somebody come in and want the gold ones after that. Then what you going to do? Exactly. Right. Yep. Yeah. And then they want silver. You yeah, know? white, black, and gold chairs in your garage. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Oh, my gosh. Okay. So, so from, from the AV standpoint, mm -hmm. we're looking at labor, um, the screens, camera, the lights, equipment. and all the other, the bells and whistles, right? So there isn't a, there's, what I'm saying is there's not a specific formula that you have mm, for pricing. I don't believe so. There's, there's rates for different items. Yeah. Um, but for, I put it like this. Most, most, most of the times, like Ashley, we work with Ashley a lot. A lot of our clients, a lot of our repeat clients, mm -hmm. we're, we're flexible when it comes to our pricing. Um, and one thing I can say about our company, we're, 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 we're flexible when it comes to our pricing. Um, so she might say, okay, I got a budget that I'm trying to stay with there. And then I say, okay, let me put this together and see what it looks like when it comes down to your budget. Then if, the, if it's higher than what her budget is, we'll sit and say, okay, this is what I came up with. Right. This is why mm -hmm. that, that, that is this budget and let's see if we can kind of come close to that number. Right. Got it. Because scopes change. Yeah, because right. it, it changes. Yeah. So just like how you were saying, you went in and if it's, if the lights are on the floor, you're going to have a certain look, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. If they go up, you're going to have a different look. Most people want the best or mm -hmm. the least. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you just have to figure out what that common, you know, mm -hmm. uh, gauge is for both parties right and that's really where like your planners are coming in so it's mm -hmm. like i want to make sure that shans has exactly what it is that he wants mm -hmm. but i have to also make sure that they're able to profit off of the work that they're doing right. and they're not giving everything you know away for free for so sure. it's like you know tori and i are mm -hmm. like that middleman between our clients and mm -hmm. our vendor partners is what mm -hmm. we call them you know right. so it's not just like this random person the same way that you're one of my clients they may work with me on three or four different projects mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. um so so do you have a formula with event planning what you do well everything is factors right so they just gave you so many different factors if it's a 200 person you know meeting versus yeah. a 5,000 person conference right so it's it's the same for me you know the scope is different which means that it'll be different pricing. Just like what Tori is saying, the, for an event that she did so many years ago and she charged Kiana $500, right? It's no way possible that T Tori is doing, maybe doing the same task, mm -hmm. right? But she has a different expertise. She also has a larger team, mm -hmm. right? So it's all these different factors that go into operating your company. Even though we don't have anything that's a physical product, our expenses are different. Yeah. Well, you know, so for me, I charge, I have three different price points when people pay me. Mm -hmm. So if you want me to plan it, there's a planning fee. Mm -hmm. If mm -hmm. you want me to design it, it's a design fee. Yeah. And then there's the execution for the design. So right. you still have to pay for the flowers and all the other vendors. So I do the same thing that mm -hmm. Ashley does. So it's a, I call it pretty much a one-stop shop. When people yep. come mm -hmm. to me, they don't have to deal with the vendors. Right. They deal only with me. And then but, I deal with everybody else. So right. what is our form? And the reason I'm, I, I think I want to talk to, I want I think I want to, I, I talked to an event planner years ago and she had a formula, mm -hmm. right? And it was like, um, it was like, there's a flat fee plus a percentage of what you spend, Correct. which didn't sound, it sounded weird to me. Like how did, how, well, is your price based on what I spend? That's how I charge, yeah. This, really? is, okay. this is the thing. So with the planning, if you want somebody, for most of the clients, I'll tell you this, that I deal with. I've, I've had clients that come to me that don't have the time. They know they want to have an event or a party. Mm -hmm. um, I've had one client that I met, we talked over the phone. And they're like, yo, we want to have this event on this day. These are the colors. This is the budget. Mm -hmm. Okay, fine. So that means that... I'm responsible. I got to spend my time driving, going to look at venues or researching venues. Mm -hmm. Then I got to call and do all the paperwork, figure out, negotiate the contracts to make sure it meets within their budget. I'm the person that's even with the food. My clients don't even pick out food. Mm -hmm. So it's like I'm picking oh, out wow. meals. Everything. Sometimes I'm going to do tastings. Mm. I'm, I am picking out menu cards and all the stuff that Ashley says she don't like to do. So I'm just <laughs> designing everything contacting yep. all the vendors, uh, scheduling everything, yep. you know, and then I got to be there on site. And a lot of people don't realize for me, because I do do design and we do do the actual setup. 
depending on the event, sometimes I'm up 24 hours, two days without minimum sleep, maybe an hour or two of sleep just mm-hmm. to get the event done. Easy. Oh, you gonna pay for that. Yeah. Easy. Yeah. Yeah. So it's just. It's so as, but if you're teaching another event planner to do what you do, yeah, which like I we am. can't, I mean, yeah. we can't just, all right, well, it's based on what I feel I want to charge today. No, 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 no. It is a, it's a system to everything, right. mm-hmm. you know, so you can, it's, it's several different ways. I don't want to get into give all the details because I'm teaching a workshop in April to teach people how to do mm-hmm. this. Well, yeah. Give, yeah. Me, give it all the way today. Well, I'm coming, Tori. Give me a few because I want to, I want to hear your pricing model too. And I promise you, if no matter how much information you give here, the more you have, the more information you give the more likely they are to sign up for that workshop. I'm telling you. Okay. Just 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 trust me on this to be true. Right. Okay. Um okay, are you give me your give me your formula mm-hmm. on So you pricing. just you just said it and you said that you don't understand it, which yeah. is another part of our services, right? So we have to educate our client on why we charge a certain, you know, uh, a certain way, right? Mm-hmm. So if you were to come to me, you're like, "Ash, I need to do this for like I got 10 for you," right? Well, you can't tell me what you got for me, right? Because I have to tell you what I'm providing to you, right? right in the same in the same way that Tori was saying, sometimes it, it just depends on the scenario. So there's no, I can't give you a number. And right. a lot of people want a number. Mm-hmm. That's just like if you go right. to James and Keisha, it's like, well, you know, I have, um, how much is it going to cost for me to do my event? Well, let's sit down and have a conversation. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Because there's just so many different factors of it, Right. Um, so for me, I charge a flat rate plus a percentage, mm-hmm. which is what you're referencing. The reason that the, the percentage never changes, right? Yeah. Or it could change depending on what type of event it is. Some people like to hear a flat rate. Mm-hmm. Now, of course, of course, like with Tori and I, as planners and producers, once we get to talk to you a little bit more and hear all of the details, hear really what you want all in. Like when I walk away from this event, I only want to spend $200,000. Then Tori is able to go and say, all right, this is what I can do with the with the um, with the design. Mm-hmm. This is how much I know I need to walk away from and feel comfortable about this event. AV, like, can you help me out on this? Or, you know, DJ, this is how much I have for you. And then we're able to go and curate mm-hmm. your vendor your partners for mm-hmm. the event. So it's not just a number that works sometimes. Right. Yeah. Right. Um. Again, the percentage comes in because when you walk away from the event, you want to feel that you were treated fairly. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. If I give you a flat rate and you tell me that we have a 500 person conference, right? Ash, I got 10 for you. The scope may change. Mm-hmm. Your budget may grow. But if yeah. I'm still stuck at just a flat rate, mm-hmm. everything is still yep. changing for me. Yeah. Yeah. And mm-hmm. it's, you know, 200 person event and I'm getting paid $5,000. That's not good. Again, no. it may be for somebody. <laughs> Sorry, no. no. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. You know, it, it may be for somebody depending on where they are, you know, in their in their planning career and things of that nature. That might be what you want to pay. But you're also going to get that service level from them. Again, right. exactly. I've been doing this for 12 years. So things that take yeah. me 15 minutes to do, you're paying for that because of all of my experiences. Right. So if it's a 10K retainer. Fee, right mm-hmm. and then it's 20 percent of what the budget the budget is that we're managing again when i tell you i'm touching every aspect of your event <coughs> i have to be okay. able to mm-hmm. if i have 150 emails from james mm-hmm. walkthroughs every single month to plan this very long conference to where you don't even have to show up for it okay yeah. we got you I have to do the same thing with Tori and every other planner, you know, or every other vendor, depending upon what their their deliverables are. I might have to take, talk to the fireworks guy two times. I have to talk to Tori and three permits. times a week. Yeah, if you're doing that, then you got to deal with permits that you don't even deal with. Right. That we have to deal with. Right. Yeah. So it's just, it's, it, there's not a number that anyone will be able to tell you. And if they do, you should question it. And sometimes you don't know to question that because you got the number that you want it. Mm-hmm. And that's not how event planning and production works. I think it's it's kind of making sense now because if, if I say, <laughs> all right, well, I want you to plan my event. I give you $10,000 and right. I'm going to have um, 200 people and we're going to have like this small screen. Well, you're saying I might get a bigger budget. I say, okay, well, it's going to be 400 people now. Mm -hmm. I'm getting a huge screen. Mm -hmm. You're saying you get to grow with the growth of the event because it's more Mm -hmm. to manage 
and Correct. you know that you're because you're taking the, care the of the scope of work changes. Right. Yeah, so the scope the changes added, too. The, people don't realize the mm -hmm. more people that you add or the more things that you add creates more work for us. Right. Yeah. Right. That we have to do. It's just adding more onto the task and everything that we're having to right. create or do or produce or right. whatever. Gotcha. The so registration for two hundred people can be, let's just say, ten people. Mm -hmm. Registration for 400 people, now you're talking about doubling your labor. So right. everything grows as your scope changes. Mm. A perfect example of the percentage is I tell clients when they're new to like even hearing this from mm -hmm. me, um, it's like a general contractor for a house, right? Mm -hmm. They eat off of everything that they touch. They're mm -hmm. managing your project. It's the same thing. We're managers of your projects. Yeah. So if we have to touch it, if we have to manage it, and some people say, oh, well, I have my venue already. Beautiful. One less thing that we have to worry about, but now I have to go and manage that relationship mm. throughout the process. And now you're telling me, here you go. I have this person for you. <clears throat> I mean, I can find a venue for you faster than you just told me what your venue was. Yeah. I mean, I have a full Rolodex of vendors. So you're not really saving me time. It's probably more work for us because now we have to go back, look at your contract. And there are mm -hmm. so many things that you did not get. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. right. Concessions yeah. galore that you yeah. missed. Yep. That you missed or Watch don't know contracts. to ask for. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Because yeah, you thing. don't know. I right. always tell people um, hiring a planner is like hiring a good attorney to represent you. Mm -hmm. it's, it's no different. Oh, wow. Yeah. No, I'm careful of those thing. contracts and hotels that get you. Let's talk about something. Let, let, <laughs> let's say about people. This is not for me, okay? This is for all those that's watching right now. What are some concessions or things we need to think about specifically when we're talking about a hotel? Because last year, oh my gosh, in Miami, I will never, ever mm. mark my Oh, beast. Miami is a different beast. You know, I'll I've never do it. there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And they're out there. Very, very expensive. What are, what are some things that we, let, let's talk about it from the AV side real quick. Because uh, some venues, they yep. make you I was just going to say use that. their team. Okay, right. One, one thing you can say right off the rip when it comes to those contracts, and those contracts, most of the time, the hotel they say you have to use their AV it company. It's not true. Mm -hmm. That and you're they don't exclusive. Know. That you have to. What, right. Which Ashley said, it's not true. Right. Really? They're, no, they, it's they, not true at all. They're protecting their bottom line <laughs> because right. what happens is if you got an AV company that's at the hotel, they're eating roughly fifty percent of what their revenue is from the from the AV company. Right. So right off the rip, they saying, okay, that you have to use us because whatever your AV bill is, I know 50% going back to us, which is going straight to their bottom line. Mm. Mm. So that's how they get you. And you don't because it's like, I tell clients, like if Ashley coming in, um, she has an event and she's spending, let's say $400,000 worth of catering and your AV portion is 70,000, right? A lot of people do that. A lot of people. Mm -hmm. Depends on how long, your, depends on how long your event is. Yeah, it's yeah. easy. So what happens is that Come on, oh, over oh, side, oh, 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 <laughs> Come on over to our side, Shane. Come on over to our side, So more than likely, the hotel is going to, you're going to, they're going to say, well, you got to bring, you, you can't bring an outside AV company. You have to use in-house. The hotel is going to tell you that if you're spending 400000 just throwing out a number, they're going to tell that AV company, no, nah, don't worry about it. I'm going to keep this 400000 because I'm not going to, I'm not worrying about losing 30000 because they want to bring 400000 mm -hmm. So you out that contract right off the rip right. when it comes to mm -hmm. audiovisual. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. And again, it goes with your planner games. negotiating yep. as well. And, and like, no, we want to bring in our own yeah. provider. Yep. Right. And so you may end up having to pay a fee. But again, yeah. depending upon your partner, yep. mm -hmm. I can go to them and say, hey, the this is what the fee is going to be for the yep. hotel for us to go out, use outside network, right? Mm. Just like insurance or whatever, mm. right? When you mm. think about it, you're going to pay an additional fee. They're going to take that off of their bill or try to work with me as best as possible to one, give me an elevated show but to also know that that was a fee that we're now having to take on by going to that particular venue. Yeah, and, and also, hotel started that, I say about maybe 10 years ago, they started adding what they call this liaison fee. Right. Or certain fee for bringing your outside uh, AV company mm -hmm. in. Yeah. And most of the time, we can right. absorb yeah. that fee because we're already giving you a great discount. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because most of the hotel rates are a lot higher normally than what our rates are. Yeah. It's because of that 50% they're giving back. So... If you got a projected normal rent to five hundred dollars, that hotel gonna charge you. The AV company gonna charge you around a thousand dollars because they know five hundred is going off the top back to the hotel. So they need to make that difference back. A thousand plus 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 plus
they have they, like their own preferred vendors. That, yeah, yeah, that's, that's in, the hotel, that's that's that in the hotel that they use. In the hotel like that they use. Pastry shelves, you have catering. Sometimes they have instant house catering, mm-hmm. but they essentially Contract outsource them. that. Yeah. Right. And then they outsource other, you know, things that's needed. But they say it's included in their package. Correct. Right. Because right. gotcha. they have the volume. Right. Yeah. So mm-hmm. they're giving the, the their turnover to is, them. Yeah. Is, is super high. So they're able to do that. The, the thing about it is, it's like if you do want to bring in an outside person, um, they ch- they charge you for it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's a fee just like what else, most venues have their set caterers. And then if you mm-hmm. want to bring in your own, right. you pay an outside catering fee to bring in right. somebody. So you essentially have to pay to bring in an outside caterer. And that's where the liaison comes in. So they mm-hmm. basically just sit and watch us set, set up. up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they don't do anything, right. but they still, it's still. They'll, char- right. they'll, yeah, they'll charge still a fee for that. The, a fee for that. Yeah. So mm-hmm. these so. the AV companies go to the hotel and negotiate mm-hmm. a contract with the hotel. And for us coming in being your audiovisual provider, we're going to give you 50% of whatever the profits are. God. Because it. we're the exclusive provider. Goodness gracious. And that's, but, and that's where it comes that's in now. understanding that we know now it's negotiable. Because it's negotiable. Oh, yeah. yeah. Everything it is. is. Everything is. Because the hotel is just a company. They want to make money. Yep. And yeah. they just bring in their boys to get the rest of the money. Right. Mm-hmm. But if they can get a little money and not lose, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. And the more that you provide to that particular venue, the more leverage that you have. Right. Yep. So if you're doing just meeting space, then you're going to pay for that meeting mm-hmm. space. Mm-hmm. If you're doing meeting space and F&B, which is food and beverage, then your meeting space should Likely be free, right? Yeah, or no charge. Extremely discounted, yeah. Depending on the venue. Got it. What's some other like gotchas that be, these hotels? They be playing games, man. They do. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I had a client one time that was doing a wedding, and she went and booked the venue, and then came and hired me, yeah. which I thought I was like, why would you do that? Yeah, you never. So did. they had charged her for a dance floor that comes with, they have it anyway. It comes with the the dance floor on the stage comes with the <laughs> comes venue. With the room. But they charged her for it. And right. then yep. the other thing was, she was staying at the hotel that's connected to the, um, well, she was staying at the hotel. The space that she was renting for the actual wedding was the space next door, mm-hmm. which is all connected. They charged her for parking. Oh my for God. her guests mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. everybody was staying at the hotel so when she told me that i was like why would you do that when everybody's staying at the hotel like nobody's driving yeah it should be but she had already crazy. signed off on it Everything. so it was just it was but they can... knew it they didn't say nothing to her they're gonna get as much as as much as they can <laughs> off top like it's this is just i think they're probably 50 almost 50 concessions that i asked for off top i don't i don't even really? care what the event is yeah it's in my we call it rfp it's going to be in the rfp what does that stand for um request for a uh, proposal, proposal. 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 Yeah. so parking as tori talked about i'm also asking for discounted parking mm-hmm. for the event mm-hmm. days um i also have to have certain free parking free exclusive nights. parking for like different vips things mm-hmm. like that rooms, um room if we do rooms, rooms. yeah, yeah if we're doing rooms. rooms um depending on how long the event is um you should be getting like one room or room night per Perfect. whatever typically in in the industry it's about 30 to 40 depending yeah. on like how many rooms are booked or a free so, room per 30, per 30. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. correct so that could be a suite for the host it can be a suite for my team um, I also ask for staff rates. So the rate that the attendees are getting, the staff rate is going to be lower. Mm-hmm. So the right. the attendees may pay $199. My staff rooms are going to be 109 And I and I'll ask for at least 10, 15 mm-hmm. of those. So mm-hmm. that's like James and Keisha staying on site, your team staying on site, my team staying on site. Like, you know, some of the vendors that need to stay there. So those are all lower rates because again, you're having to pay for them. So I want it as low as possible. So instead of you just going on and booking at the 199, we have the one oh nine for us. Got it. So Got it's just it. a lot I'd be of different for it for free. Yeah, I that want too. My team for free. I ain't yeah, paying yeah. for yeah. free for free. Office. Now. I want an yeah. office space for free. Mm-hmm. Um, in the hotel, even though I don't use it, I want free. <laughs> I free <laughs> free waters because you're usually yeah. gonna be on site at your venue, yeah. you know. But I want it just in gotcha. case if you say, hey, I need to take a quick meeting. I don't want them in my suite because mm-hmm. know that you'll have a suite, not yeah. a regular room. I don't want them in my suite. No work. We got a, a meeting space downstairs. Because things happen. You just yeah. never know. Yeah. Uh, what has been one of your biggest nightmares lately? Like, it, it was just something you learned recently. So, listen. I'm just going to put it out there. Something happens at every event. <laughs> oh, yes. I, I'm just going to be real. Something, something always happens. Mm. It's been so many countless things. I can't even tell you. Like, Give me one that, like, really, you'll never, ever forget this moment. 
<laughs> it was a, a outside vendor that brought in a, a cake for a wedding. And I had just sent the bride down the aisle. They wanted to hang the cake on a swing. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and it this was is a couple on, of years ago. I remember the trend. Yeah. Uh, yes. So everybody, you know, everybody wanted that or whatever. And my thing was where they was hanging it from, it was on a sheetrock anchor. So no it's not exposed beam. beam so yeah. it didn't have the support beam. So I kept telling them, you can't hang an actual heavy ass cake up there like that. You nice. need to, if it's a, a faux cake, then go ahead. But a heavy right. cake and everybody, like, it's going, go ahead. Brad went down the aisle. I walked in the room. The whole cake fell and just splattered mm. all over the floor. And it's always our fault. Mm. Yeah. Goodness. Everything is the planner's fault. Yeah. Oh, my Everything. God. So I just looked at it. Everybody freaking out. I was like, clean it up. <laughs> like, I mean, what you want me to do? The top tier is still good. Take the top tier in the back. Wrap it up. Y'all got pictures of it? They like, yeah, we got pictures. Okay, mm -hmm. cool. Go upstairs to get another cake. Yep. Set it up. Put a slice. Go. Somebody run the public. She put a slice of cake in, <laughs> mm -hmm. in the back of the slot. Uh, and then like so that. when the bride came in, I just, you know, she went around the room and we got to the cake. I said, look, the cake fell. Cake <laughs> fell. This is well, a, like I, I gave you. her a nicer cake, you know, mm -hmm. so this is this. We're going to give you your money back. We took pictures of it. We got your topper in the back. That's mm. it. I mean, that's all I can do. Right. So um, this one small thing. Um, I can't. Things have broken, yeah. glass, tables. Um, oh, I did an event at the Fox and all of the draping that they had put up, they didn't put the Ooh. sandbags on it. The, mm. the, 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 the way had that and it fell. And everything collapsed and fell all the on the day. Remember that yep. last year? Yeah. 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 It happened at, yeah, it happened. So, I mean, things happen. I don't tell the client. Yeah. Maybe after the event is over because sure. we're going to fix it. I mean, right. it's... it's it's inevitable. Things yeah. happen all the time. There's a lot of things you can do with five hundred dollars. I mean, you can have a night out with your significant other. You could buy some really expensive shoes. Well, really nice shoes are about double five hundred dollars. Um, you could buy a course, or you can learn something for five hundred dollars. But I have something better for you to do with the five hundred dollars. I want to meet with you every single morning for the rest of your life. Well, maybe not the rest of your life, but every morning, Monday through Friday, for the rest of the year. I have information and game that have allowed me to build a successful business, a successful community, and a successful life all the way around. But I want to share that with you. But the only way we can accomplish this is not me selling you a course, not me giving you a one-on-one -on -one consultation, because even with that, you'll get the information, but you'll need more. I want to meet with you every single morning. Now, would I meet with someone every morning for 500 bucks for a year? And the answer is yes. Actually, we've been doing this thing since 2017. We have what's called the morning meetup. Every single month, we have a theme, whether it's social media, whether it's motivation, whether it's strategy, whatever it is, we have a theme for the month. And every morning in that month, we have a conversation around that topic. And I am giving a wealth of knowledge, not only myself, but a lot of friends, a lot of people that you see on this podcast, they join every single week. So you need a community of people that you can grow with and you need a coach. I'm your coach. The Morning Meetup is your community. Go to themorningmeetup.com. It's $499 and I will meet you every single morning for an entire year. Give it a shot. Yeah. Give, give, so. give me your worst worse um i don't know if i have a a, a worse uh but as tori stated everything changes you just have to make adjustments so as a planner you are an amazing planner because you know you plan for the best mm -hmm. but usually you have planned everything before your event days so mm -hmm. it's just crisis management mm -hmm. on event days at all times mm -hmm. right so i think um changing of the schedules and things like that and how many people you have to let know um that's one of my big things uh, yeah. for the larger events because things happen people mm -hmm. are running late you have a panel you're missing two people how long it takes for them to get there park get them settled in get them to the stage just making those adjustments having to pull other people in to go on the stage that's not playing it's just a lot you know that yeah. kind of goes on but i don't i don't have nightmares um about that's anything. more me. we just go with it you know <laughs> like we, you just have to go with it and know that you're walking into something that you have to have a solution for yeah you just have to have a solution bro i know the tech side bro there has to be some, oh man we the have, tech is just so finicky like it is yeah it's technology yeah like they say things could go wrong 
We haven't really haven't had any nightmare because most yeah. of the time that we we get we get in the space early enough to get everything set up and ready to go and kind of run through those run tests through everything. and those scenarios just in case something go wrong. We we've been blessed that we haven't had no no failure. Um, like doing show. Of course, we had some stuff that you know maybe a microphone clipped or or for some reason we just changed the batteries, but that set of batteries are are bad batteries because right. that happens. You can open up a pack and the batteries are still bad. Yeah. What someone might you know the mic might drop or something like that. We were there just to replace the microphone, but we just been we've been lucky. Are we, we haven't lost had the, power for? Yeah. A are we lost power seconds. for a second? Stuff like that. That's not something you can control. Nothing no. we control. So look, Kent, let's say Kenny, mm -hmm. uh, all all these guys, right? They're gonna start a an AV production company. Mm -hmm. Give me some rookie mistakes from back in the day that you had to learn through that like they really need to know. Rookie mistakes back in the day. You must. I started when there was still overhead projectors. You remember those? Yeah, people don't use them no more. <laughs> With the little transparency sitting on top of the overhead. <laughs> oh yeah, the event space we used to do that all the time. <laughs> we, put on a table, we put on a chair one time, yep, yep. Put, it up, put something under the little top so it shoot up right. Yeah, you Rookie. put the little transparency down. <laughs> then back in the day, still the projectors that had those thirty five millimeters. You remember mm -hmm. those? Mm -hmm. The little like pre pictures or For something sure. you put in there, and that was your uh, your slide. Um, uh, Rookie mistakes. I've I've made a lot of mistakes um, from when I started the business. I, I would say that. Um, do you think of any? No, you don't make mistakes. Yeah, that's true. Y'all have <laughs> made mistakes. I'm thinking about the people that are watching this episode like, yo. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. I would say pricing uh, and, and, pricing. Um, and pricing. mentorship. Yeah, and, de you know, definitely. Coaching and def definitely, like actually, yeah. definitely pricing. I've made mistakes where like, like um, Tori was saying that I didn't price stuff right. Mm -hmm. um, because you know that when you first start a business, the first thing you're thinking of, I need to figure out what the competitors are charging and I need to mm -hmm. charge a lot less mm. to get the, to get the business, think. right? right? Yeah. Then once you get the business, you say, okay, maybe I shouldn't have did that because right. you're, you're losing. Yeah. Because it's, it's, been, it's, been, it's been, you know, the first few years that it was struggled that, that we were losing. We wasn't really making money. Yeah. Um, but at the same time, I thought about at least I was building the client base. Yeah. Then, but then sometimes it was harder. You know, clients are used to them low prices. So when you start adjusting your prices to get back to scale where it's supposed to They're be. They're like, oh, wait, wait. Last year sure you charged me this. Exactly. Then you start getting that, that, that pullback right. from that. Right. So. for the same thing. And not, so. yeah, yeah. And not only that. So I think that that's one of the things that I tell um, novice planners as well is you can give your gift for free. Right. You'll hear a lot of people talk about like giving your gift for free. Um, you still have to be extremely selective with that. And as you were stating, James, when you charge pennies right or you're not charging what your true worth is mm -hmm. you have to understand that for us a lot of our business is referrals yeah mm. everybody talk <laughs> yeah everybody talks Most so they're going to talk about what you charge them just yep, is as simple as you just asked tori like so what yeah. did you charge it's just a natural part of the conversation right so if you charge that person 500 and then you want to turn around and charge them 3000 for the same exact type of service, it's harder for you to kind of stay and work within that same um, referral feel. Yeah. Right. So you have to be careful with how you charge and make sure that you're being as consistent as possible. And that comes from mentorship, coaching, um, continuous education within the <clears throat> field, you know, with different yeah. conferences and things uh, for the event um, industry. So I think that that's like a big thing for people gotcha talk to my mm -hmm. novice planners this is my thing this is what i have learned about charging under under what you feel like you are supposed to be charging mm -hmm. or what your value is mm -hmm. what i found and what i know is that the people that i have worked with that i have given discount to has been the most difficult Jesus. people yes. to Amen. work with that's true Very so true. i every don't time? even i every don't even time. do it hey jay i'm still on my my sponsorship okay oh. <laughs> and that's okay. another thing and that's another we do a lot too like they, they, they to love the sponsorship, sponsorship. Partner. <laughs> how do you go partner with something that i do and you need exactly right? <laughs> it's just yeah leave me alone. Like, i love you Shane. <laughs> and some of the time this it seems to me like the smaller the event the more difficult the more it is. difficult it is the smaller the, the smaller the yeah sometimes yeah. sometimes yeah. why why is that you think i think that's just, pretty much what she's saying yeah i think just just something i just i just know that i just know just from working with certain people 
And when I have given, every time I have given a discount, it's been like mm -hmm. the worst client to, mm. to, to work with. What makes a bad client? Um, mistress. Oh my goodness. Someone that wants to micromanage everything that you're doing. That's mm -hmm. one. <laughs> like, I don't even understand that. Someone that know? has a uh, champagne <laughs> dreams with that. beer money. Yeah. Yep. Beer they budget. see this. I want this. What is it? And then when you tell them the cost, like, ah, uh, can we work something out? Or yeah, why they want you this? to figure or, out a way to yeah. give them something that is like, Super if I bring in this, I and think, hold on, hold on. To be fair, from a client's perspective, <laughs> <I am> being <laughs> fair. <laughs> I do want, um, so so Drew, he he did a podcast summit last year. He's doing it this year in terms of like planning and stuff like that. And what I what I rock with on, on Drew is he has done events for himself before, so he's like a marketing mind. So mm -hmm. his value for me mostly is he helps me think through how do we get these people going. He understands that part. But like something will be happening and I'm like, man, I want this to happen, but I ain't got the money. We need to figure out a way. And sometimes I'll figure out a way to make it happen. But if I never said anything, then, you know, I, I kind of. I, but whose responsibility but, is, who do you think holds the responsibility in that? Is that the client or is that your vendor partners? I don't think it's a responsibility. But she was like, one of the worst things is somebody who wants something and wants you to figure out how to get it for a cheaper price or kind of kind of work a light miracle. Mm -hmm. I think that's fair, though, for someone to to want that. Mm -hmm. I don't think it should be yeah. a bad thing for us to like, let's let me ask, because I'm sure Sorry, I'm sure you're a miracle worker in some ways. Right. Yes, that's the problem. Right. With a lot of it because and I'm sure you've had this happen. When I with the with the miracle worker thing, people call you at the last minute. Mm -hmm. I've had people call me twenty four hours before they need an event the mm. next day. Yeah. Literally. Did you make it happen? Yes, I Should did. Should they but not have not, called you? No, I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. But if I had told those people that it's a super duper expedited fee. Yeah, a Peter fee is what I call them. Yeah. Pain in the ass fee. That part. <laughs> but I mean, but that's I think for the caliber of what you all do, I think that's why someone's gonna hire you and pay a premium because I'm sure y'all not the cheapest in town. No, it, so, I'm known to be high. To, to, so yeah. that I can call you, you know, 24 you hours you and she's going to so, she's going to work yep. a miracle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yep. so. I mean, we are miracle workers in in some things. And just like Tori was saying, there are, there are so many things that you guys don't see. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right. And that is the beauty in knowing um, the caliber of vendor partners that you have. Yeah. Right. And not is it's not only your brand. It's Tori's brand. It's Ashley's brand. Mm -hmm. It's, you know, it's James and Keisha's brand. So we're as worried and as vested. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. In the process being amazing, because, again, mm -hmm. how you're taken care of as a speaker will lead you to got to bring Ash on. I don't know when mm -hmm. I'm going to get her. But eventually. I like yeah. her. I like the way she moves. I like mm -hmm. the way that she works. I like mm -hmm. the way that she takes care, mm -hmm. you know, of us. And that comes with, in a sense, a price tag. Right. Mm -hmm. So we work miracles for, for you a lot of the times that you don't even know, just like with us talking about the concessions. There are concessions that Shan's going to get just by Ashley being his event producer mm. that you don't even know what to mm -hmm. ask. So you don't know what you don't know. Got so it's, it. that's why I say mistrust is the worst thing that you can have with a client, because when they don't see your value and they don't um, trust you in the process, it just makes the whole thing really hard to be able to deliver really what you want. Mm -hmm. And we know we can do it, yeah. but you just are tugging at releasing that control mm -hmm. or. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, whatever that is internally in you to think that you have to be a handholder when you really don't have to because you've you've created the beautiful team. Yeah. You have everybody in place. Like, let them work. Let them shake. You have to you know? trust them. Yeah. You just yeah, got to yeah. got to let them let them shake. Um, the other thing I was going to say to Ashley's point, too, is what a lot of people don't see is a lot of people don't know a lot of our vendors. Mm -hmm. So if something goes wrong, let's just say you hire me to plan your party. Yeah. And let's just say one of my vendors mess up. You don't know that vendor. That's my responsibility mm -hmm. to correct that. You know, so that's a lot of pressure. Yeah. That's a lot of responsibility on our end, trusting the people that 
we deal with to be mm-hmm. able to execute to, right flawlessly to to make this thing happen excuse me yeah, true. let me let me ask about relationship strain mm-hmm. so uh you're married y'all married i mean i don't know i don't know what's going on oh. <laughs> I don't know. hey listen man. <laughs> Hey, throw, throw it on that shirt right there. <laughs> throw it on Ashley's shirt real quick. That's a the wrong one, man. That one, man. <laughs> Big Ash in the building. You know what I mean? um, for everyone, and you've been doing it for a long time, so you've been in and out of relationships. But wh- tell me about the strain on a relationship for an event, because it's not like, like I come in here, I record a podcast, then I go home. It's not nobody calling me about the podcast that we did and what we're going to do tomorrow. Mm -hmm. But once you're in the midst of this event, it's calls and it's, I got a meeting and stuff like that. So um, let me start, let me start with both of you all, even though you're not married to each other, you both are married to other people separately. Um, Is there any relationship strain? Uh, For me at the beginning, it was, you know, but it's been so long now. So my husband's kind of used to me just doing my own thing. Drop it a dime, I may have to fly somewhere because of work or do a site mm-hmm. visit. So as long as it makes sense, it's different if you're absent and they don't see the, the you know, the fruit from the labor or whatever you, yeah. you may call it. So it's, now he's okay with it. But at the beginning, he just couldn't understand it because, you know, the production role is a whole nother beast. And if yeah. you're not in it, mm-hmm. you just don't know, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. so... Uh, yeah, with my relationship, I'm good I, right now. I think at the, at the beginning it was a, a struggle for a while, but you know, being an entrepreneur and um, you know, you're owning a company, there's that's always it's, it's work, 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 mm-hmm. work. And I think that in any relationships, your spouse kind of get adjusted to it. Mm-hmm. Um, so it was an adjustment, but now it, it's good now. That's good. But what was the what was some of the issues? Like, what are some things you had to deal? Just with? not not, not being, being home present. enough, not being yeah. present, not being around. Yeah, D- didn't understand. Like he just said, don't understand what's going on. The nine to five. And, and, and until you see, until you see the fruits, of, you know yeah. what has inspired since you started the business. Got to make it make sense. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Adam. Um, yeah, Tori. Uh, and I wish your husband wasn't here right now. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it just changed slightly. Oh, no, my ain't gonna change. <laughs> so, so there. I mean, and you're dealing with people who. Uh, Um, are obviously putting on these events and Mm -hmm. um, you're around a lot of the opposite sex. Yeah, I I work with a lot of men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Mm -hmm. have you ever felt anything like, all right, well, even if it's not you, but maybe some of the clients are like doing a bit too much, texting a little too late? For for the most part, I set the tone Mm -hmm. for that. So like my husband is with me a lot of the times, even like, Cause we work hand in hand together. He does transportation, I does events. So a lot of our business collide yeah. a lot of the times. And when I'm dealing with the opposite sex, I make sure I introduce my husband to everybody that I'm working with. So there's no misunderstanding. And gotcha. if I feel like, even if you don't say anything, if I feel like you doing a little bit too much, sometimes I can be a little aggressive mm-hmm. to where it's not even attractive yeah. To you, <laughs> speaking, <laughs> you know, just like, Ooh, okay. you know, so, and then for the most part, it's just a mutual respect that I have for my clients. So, for the most part, I don't have any problems. No, Mm-mm. Mm-mm. I yeah. don't. Um, seems like a whole lot of pressure doing events, man, because it's like, it I is, mean, I'm it, it 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 so yeah. before, on the Forbes, and I think this was like a couple of years <clears throat> ago. Um, Forbes has, you know, a, li- a list of most stressful jobs. Mm-hmm. And yeah. I think event planner was number five. Mm-hmm. So it was like mm. police officer, surgeon, <laughs> uh, uh, president, event planner. Right. Like no lie. Like if you go back and look at the Forbes list of um, like most stressful jobs. And it is. It's a lie. I mean, in, on any relationship, not just, you know, your your spouse, but even your your friends and family. Right. Mm-hmm. And my, you know, my girlfriends even tell me like, when it's close to event time, leave her alone. Mm. Ooh, yeah. And they know that it's, it's the space that I need, right? right. Yeah. Um, because my responsibility is not just my team. Yeah. It's every person. Every person. Every yep. person. And that's a lot. So again, when you think about 
again, I'll say Invest Fest, right? 20,000 attendees and then all of the other numbers that we're talking about. So we're talking about 400 small businesses, but you know how many passes you got along with that, right? Sheesh. So it's 400 exhibitors times mm -hmm. six. What's that number? Four mm -hmm. times six. Two, 24. 24. So 2,400 in the yeah. vendor marketplace, 20,000 butts in seats, right? Let's round it up to 200 speakers plus uh, everybody you know, the entourage. plus fives, right? Mm -hmm. So that number. <clears throat> and so that all comes on, for me, in, in our mind, me. Mm -hmm. You know, so to understand and to know you have to have a partner that is okay with that. Because at mm -hmm. the end of the day, we're doing this because it's our assignment, you know, and we're passionate about what we do and we love it. So for to have a partner or someone who doesn't understand what you feel individually, because we're all individuals before we're, yeah. you know, together as a couple, um, to know and understand what that person's assignment is yeah. in this world at that chapter, right? Because it changes mm -hmm. on, you know, what level it is. But in that particular chapter in their life, how can you be supportive of what they feel that their assignment is when they wake up and what brings them joy. So whatever small adjustments that you have to do for that small amount of time, it's yeah. 365 days in the year. We're not turning over events like that. Right. You know, mm -hmm. if we're having these large events and things like that, it's probably a whole month that we have the, we have the house laid, laying on right. your chest, <laughs> like enjoy that yeah. month. Right, right. But I need these, you know, four days. I need them. Mm -hmm. And I need for you to be as supportive as possible mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and to be the one that I can lay on at night and not talk about the event or talk about the event. Right, and right. if you can't provide that to me, then you're not my person. Right. Mm. So you have to, you know, understand the same with you, you know, like what you build and you're in your legacy building for your babies. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like Dre got to understand that, you know, and what that takes from you. And this may be a very small portion until you build out that legacy to be able to be at home for 10 years straight. Yeah. Right. And it's oh, not just sure. relationships either. It's friendships as well. Yeah. yeah. Because there's parties I miss. There's trips I miss. All of that. Holidays. There's a lot of things. And, you know, there's some that say, oh, Keisha, you're too busy for us now. You don't have time for us. So we're not going to call you no more. Mm. You know, yeah. and it's, it kind of stings a little bit because like I'm, I'm working like, you know, yeah event they don't care about if you're sick or if you got your son turned 10 or anything they want their <laughs> event to be done and, yeah, yeah they want sure. you to come and show up and execute their event you know so there's a lot of i had to say no a lot and that was hard for me for a while because yeah. i was like a socialite and i'm like james how you gonna tell me i can't go somewhere i, I can't do it like no but yeah. over time i'm like wow i lost a lot of friendships wow. because of my my, my work but yeah. I wouldn't change it because yeah. I, I love what I do. Yeah, yeah I can mm -hmm. agree to that. I had a lot of issues with some of my friends in the beginning. They just didn't understand. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, because I missed same thing. I missed birthday parties. I missed certain things that I couldn't because most of the events happening on the weekend. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. You know, well, now it's changing. But for the mm -hmm. most part, it was on the weekend. So it's like friends, birthday parties that I didn't show up to. And they really felt like it done met up with me and we didn't yeah. have to go to lunch and sit down like yo I feel the way you didn't show up to my party mm -hmm. I'm like I've had those combos I yeah. was working you know yeah. but I'm your friend <laughs> <laughs> that, that yeah, yeah. like but, but I'm your friend certain mm -hmm. things like you said for right. a child's birthday party or uh, uh, certain things that you you know that you miss that people don't care about you know what I'm saying because right. people only want what they want, want. from you yeah. mm -hmm. so um what I've learned in this journey is that you know I only take on projects that I'm passionate about now. Mm -hmm. I don't try to do everybody's event. Yeah. I turn down a lot of stuff that I just, Dang. if I'm not passionate about it, really? I don't want to do it. Yes. I don't do it. That's great yeah. because he doesn't just, turn down anything oh. what? <laughs> at all. He doesn't turn down nothing. <laughs> <laughs> nothing. <laughs> nothing. Yeah. Money. Said, nothing. Oh, no money. <laughs> but I think that's also like us being women as well, you know, and then like kind of James leading the, you know, mm -hmm. the troop mm -hmm. over there, mm -hmm. being a man, that's what you guys do. You provide. So it's like, what's the next project? What's mm -hmm. the next bag? Yeah. And things right. like that. Right. Where Tori and I is like, no, we've built this thing. So it's like, eh, yeah. thanks for the opportunity. Thanks for reaching out. Right. <laughs> yeah. I mean, so you guys, oh, I mean, I want to say only, but it's not like a 40 hour, we're always doing something. Like I'm always recording year round, right? So you guys have these intense periods of time mm -hmm. and then you may be off for a little while. Mm -hmm. What are you doing in the off for a little while? For me, I say in the, in the beginning when I'm coming off an event or I got some time off, I sleep. Because mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I, I missed a lot of sleep. So I, I try to rest. I try to 
spend much time with my husband. Most of the time, me and my husband, we out of here. We gone on vacation. Yes, we is uh, out. Because if I'm here in Atlanta, I'm going to work. Is right? that like a routine mm-hmm. after every event, like major event? Y'all go somewhere or yeah, something like we, that? Yeah, we normally go somewhere. Like, I don't care if it's just over to Miami. We, we out of here. We going to go somewhere. Mm-hmm. to just kind of unwind and relax so I can really just take a beat and take a minute. And yeah. I just try, I try really hard to just turn it off, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know. Um, Have you ever left like really drained after, I'm talking about like yeah. almost mentally ill right now. This yeah. is too much. I, I just yeah. had that a couple of weeks ago. I it's usually like really the every sick. event though, right? It's huh? like, it's like the every event. Cause you put so much, it's like you say, it's a lot, it's a lot. Events are a lot. We know. <laughs> <laughs> we know we know it is it's so it's a lot right? and it's stressful um Very stressful. so you're usually drained after every event which mm-hmm. is why tori is saying too you have to take that time off yeah. like my post event ritual is within 42 hours i have to be in a spa mm. mandatory i have to be in a spa um because it's just like my way to just like wind down yeah. and just breathe and depending on how large the event is i'll take off um, a certain amount of days as well Four right. weeks. And you all are really uh, at the top of your game. I mean, do you guys still have like ebbs and flows in your businesses where it's like, ooh, we ain't got no events coming up? Yeah, absolutely. Like, in, the, in the event business, they have, they have seasons. Right. Mm-hmm. Like any other business. Yeah. Because our, our our January was, was February, was February, right? Our February was, was um, pretty slow. Right. Um, I think everything in business right now for a lot of different businesses, you know, it's a slow period right now. So what we Are people put, doing less events now? Yeah, I'm not working. Yeah, yeah. Fe- right February now. is pretty yeah. slow. We had we had like a lot of small stuff around Super Bowl and other other small events. So what we tried to do was kind of kind of tighten up on some of our training. Mm-hmm. Uh, we'll do some training in the warehouse with some of the guys, um, teach them new technology, um, the new stuff that's coming online, learning new software, changing up maybe some software that we you know that we struggled on before we didn't like it, wasn't comfortable mm-hmm. with it. Um and also rest. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Got gotcha. you. Yeah, rest. What what uh what's the busiest seasons? What's the slowest seasons? Fall is for us the summer fall and fall. Busy. Spring. It's spring, spring yeah. Yeah, yeah. Spring, spring and fall. Spring. Yeah, it's start, so everything start. but winter is busy or what? It start picking up around start. March. Mm-hmm. Like like we'll go from like March to December. And a lot of production companies not busy during those you know like right. December. But you're busy because you take it. everything. And I also we, right. we also I also um structured the business where that a lot of times that when it's the off season we have something to do because sometimes the off season could be spring. Yeah. But you know, a couple of years ago we brought a mobile stage. Mm-hmm. So during those times where we're normally slow, someone wanna call and rent our mobile stage. Mm-hmm. And with gotcha. the mobile stage, you're gonna also need sound, you're gonna also need video, you're gonna also need lighting. Gotcha. And then then a lot of we also do installs. So a lot of time when it's slow, we're right. installing stuff at different gotcha. churches, different mm-hmm. hotels. business, hotels. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So y'all like y'all that. business is pretty year round. Yeah, year round. Yeah. For mm-hmm. let's let's start with you, Tori. Uh, what are the busier seasons for you and what's the times you know it's going to be slow? Um, My busiest time is always the second half of the year. Anywhere from like June up to like November, December. But December, I try to cut it off because by then I'm a little burnt out. So I want to have time with my family. Why is June busy? Or why does it start in June? I would think it would start maybe March. Or that's like after kids get out of school and stuff or what? After kids get out of school, just certain things. Parties, Hot just, parties, yeah, just because mm-hmm. yeah. it's summertime, people yeah, are sure. more out. Mm-hmm. I think that's the case. But for me, like after December, going into the first of the year, I don't know. My last couple years in January has been like weirdly busy. Mm-hmm. Like I've been weirdly busy, like the last maybe two or three Januarys. Gotcha. But um, usually around November. I mean, excuse me, February, March is a little slower for me. And sometimes April, just give or take, those are like my slowest months. So can we catch you at a discount February, March, or not really? Nah. Man, a little bit. No seasonal pricing. No seasonal pricing. I'll tell you what, you can get but, me to come speak and do something. But certain the seasons of the year, is, a lot of times, I'm going to keep it 100 with you. <laughs> <laughs> Don't tell nobody. Just give me the money. Cash a lot me. of times, I know what I'm doing the second half of the year. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times, yeah. like now, I'm designing everything. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. So it's a lot of time for me to step back design get in new inventory 
clean out my, you know, my warehouse space. I help my team to clean it out and just try to organize to get ready for the second half of the year. Gotcha. And you had an event space, mm-hmm. um, which I remember seeing, and it was beautiful, yeah. like really high ceilings or something, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, how long did you have that? Uh, three years. Three years. Yeah. How much was the rent? 15000 a month. $15,000. Mm-hmm. Woo. It was a lot. I bet them slow seasons sucked in that, in that time did. for it. Golly, <laughs> yeah. 15 grand a month. Yeah. It but did. it worked out well. It worked so. out well. It was good. It was a learning, uh, it was a learning experience for me because um, when I, I got in it and I opened a space, I branded it as the, the Tory Williams or the TW Event Center, but everybody knew it was me. Mm-hmm. The problem that I ran into is I needed to be there. Because the people that was coming to book the space wanted me to plan mm. and design every mm. event that hit the space. But that was probably some of the thought process behind you doing it, right? A little bit, but I didn't expect it to turn out that way. Plus, I ended up doing a, I ended up, we, I was already in the process of um, doing a, te- a television show and we mm. got greenlit after, what was it, 2021? I think in 2021, we got greenlit for 20 episodes. Mm. So we were going to be filming from, was it 20? No, it was not doing COVID. We filmed the pilot doing COVID. So it was, it was 2021 when we got greenlit. It was like April. And, and they told me like, hey, you're going to have to get somebody else to oversee your space because mm. you're not going to be there. Mm-hmm. So we started filming, I think, in June or July. And we filmed until the next February or March. Wow. So oh, wow. in that time frame. It must have been a bag. It was, okay. it was, it was good. Okay. <laughs> so yeah, I saw a few of the um, in that time frame, I would only have one day off, which was Mondays. Mm-hmm. I brought someone else in to oversee my building. But the thing is, I had already booked people for the year. Right. And mm-hmm. they was expecting me to be there. So I ended up wearing myself out Got because it. I'm filming. And then like, if I stopped filming at seven o'clock at night, I was leaving there going over to the building, trying to make sure the team did what they were supposed to do. It was just a lot. Gotcha. So at the end of it, when everything was up, I was like, this is too much, mm-hmm. you know? Please so it, it was like the television show, just outside events and the events at the building was just swearing me thin to where I had got sick. Yeah. So I was just wow. like, you know, people like, oh, you need to keep it open. That's your brand. I was like, am I going to save face or I'm going to save myself? Mm. Right. Ooh, yes. So I right. save myself. I yes. like that. And what is, what is the next level for you? Next you level right for me is my goal. I'll tell you what my goal is. My goal is um, is teaching now. So I'm mm. in a place where I'm I'm wanting to start teaching other planners and designers how to do what we do. Yeah. Um. Also, I want to get more into speaking. And then thirdly, I want to get to a place where I'm only doing maybe like two or three events a year. I want to do like two, three million dollar events per year. And that's it. Mm-hmm. That way I can do two or three and then I can go yeah, sit down with my husband. Good girl. Oh, yeah, Great. Because the, yes. the percentage, if we do the two. Million, <laughs> <laughs> do the numbers, Shane. Do the numbers. I, I see what's going on. I see what's going on. Smart man. He's a smart uh, man. <laughs> James and Keisha, uh, what is the next step for you all, like for where you're at right now, what's the next level? Well, right now we're actually um, actively going after hotels for the in-house provider. Right. We talked to that person. What we talked gotcha. about, yeah. Right. So we're bringing on someone now to be like that national hotel salesperson mm-hmm. to, to go out the hotels. We have, we have a few that's pending right now. So that's kind of one of, one of our goals yeah. um, because I always was telling, you know, I always told Keisha that that hotel is like that everyday money. Yeah. Because there's always events going on every day where right. sometimes we'll have a gap mm-hmm. for a couple of weeks. I have a gap for a month. So that's that's one of the goals. Um, and uh, we're also setting up um, EAV Vegas. Ah, I'm so oh, excited. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, wow. so I wasn't sure if you were going to yeah, yeah, say absolutely. it today, but <laughs> okay. yeah. So I'm actually heading up there in March to spend a few weeks there Yeah. to, uh, to get that foundation started. Well, let me know where you staying. I'm coming. Yeah, <laughs> I'm in Vegas anytime I can be. I love. Yep. So what, what does that look Weather. like? Setting up EAV Vegas. What does that look like? Pretty well, much just just getting um uh, getting a shop together. Um, I got a I got a couple guys there that's already a couple uh my key techs, uh, mm-hmm. a couple of my directors that's there. So they actually uh live there now, and now we're kind of gathering clients and um advertising and 
putting you know putting a little filler out and talking to people and going out to some of the hotels and say hey there's another alternative that we'll be here and we can offer this 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 and this right we're um, gonna buy all new equipment yeah absolutely yeah. so mm-hmm. a warehouse full of the screens all that kind of yeah. stuff yep. dang how much they won't start off as well, big we'll start, as we're here you know, yeah, with it'll, basic it'll, yeah it'll be smaller and then we'll just grow from there depending on the response we get yeah, we have a relationship with mm-hmm. vendors you know that we'll start off, you know, buying a few LED panels, some projectors, some sound systems, start off small and kind of work our way up. I got a friend out there that I can uh, put oh, y'all with. Thank like, you. he's really good. He oh, he God. produces, like, some major oh, events. Oh, nice. I would really appreciate yes, that. Yes, thank you. Like, and I just want to connect yes. you guys with some of the uh, the venues. I mean, you know, we've worked yeah. in Vegas. I, I took them to Vegas for um, a couple of events yep. that I had yeah. there. But, yeah, yeah so... Look at yeah, God. We do I'm travel. So happy to yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we do, do travel. travel. I had a connection with in Vegas. <laughs> 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 I go there sometimes. So, what do y'all think y'all gonna have to like invest in just initial warehouse equipment? What do you think, Keisha? You I guess it depends either? on what what we see once we get there. Yeah. In a couple of weeks, we just gotta go and kind of fill it out and. First thing, we'll purchase LED walls because that's very popular right now. Mm-hmm. How much do you think you're gonna mm-hmm. spend? Especially um, in Vegas. LED walls, probably about three hundred k. Just on LED band. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Golly. Got to invest. <laughs> got to. You got to play yeah. with the big boys. Got to. Mm-hmm. Ain't going to half stepping. Yeah, that's awesome, bro. And that's how you Vegas. separate yourself from the other small business. Right, exactly. You got you got to invest in the right gear. Yeah. That's one thing that we don't short when it comes to our uh, gear and equipment. We spend the money. Wow. I yeah, love it. Absolutely. I love it. Mm-hmm. You should talk, talk yeah. to me about the next mm-hmm. step for you. And it may be the same thing, but it's, it's, be the, it's the same thing. No days <laughs> off, just work, work, work. What do you want to no. do that he just doesn't see right now? What do I want to do? Um, I never thought about that. I'm, I'm, I, I, I don't know. Cause I, me being in my right old age right now and something I talk to him all about, uh, talk to about all the time is like, I'm still trying to figure out my passion. There's not like one mm. thing that I just love, absolutely love. So I'm still kind of stuck with that. So mm. I, I don't I don't know. I'm just kind of struggling with that. I'm trying to figure out if I'll ever know what my passion is. But for right now, I'm just riding a wave. Good. Okay. And whatever I need to do to make the business grow, be successful. It wouldn't, it wouldn't grow without Keisha. Aww. Aww. Awesome. So Keisha, can I share something with you yeah, about passion? Oh, yes. So you know I'm about it. <laughs> you know, I love yes, you dearly. Yes. Um, so I will say with your passion, um, don't think that it has to be attached to a dollar. Mm-hmm. It just has to be something attached to like the joy in your mm-hmm. heart. Mm-hmm. So start to try different things that bring you joy. Right. And as people always tell us, like the money will come, the money will come. But it doesn't have to be attached to the money because mm-hmm. you have the money sitting right next right. to, you know, to where those are things that you can focus on. And even if it's bringing in, you know, somebody to do part time or part of the things that you do to where you can kind of really start to discover and work on that passion because mm-hmm. it's needed, you know, it's, and mm-hmm. it's necessary because that's going to give you your fulfillment. But just try some things and it may be roller skating, yoga. I mean, of course I'm naming the things that I love, right? <laughs> but yoga, roller skating, um, meditation, going to different retreats, wellness retreats, right. like whatever sparks your soul, go there and then it'll all come together. I appreciate for the passion. it. I yeah, you're welcome, Boo. Love you. Yeah. For I sure. have some days off to go to a retreat. Yes. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> like, no. days off. This is the time. We'll <laughs> <show. Hey days laughs> this is for the company, okay? Because when you are good, the company's yeah, good. You better believe it. Absolutely. You got it. Ash, uh, what is the next step for you? What does that next level for you look like? Next level. Um, I've been in a rest and a clarity phase mm-hmm. of life right now. Um, and it's coming about. Right. Mm-hmm. The clarity on what my next chapter, I say chapters right in life um, is coming to me. Uh, I think that I'm being led to do more teaching, you know, kind of what Tori was saying. I, I di- I've done it before. Um, I was kind of heavy really on like the wedding planning side of things. And then also um, where I graduated from right with Clayton State. And I was kind of mm-hmm. sharing that with you. Um, that I used to do substitute teaching for their event management course. And I loved it. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, So just kind of figuring out where and how I want to fall into that space. But um, some things that have kind of come on my lap are entrepreneurs like yourself, you know, have been kind of reaching out like, you know, we do a lot of internal events. We're doing this, you know, we have this type of calendar for the year and we really want to keep it internal. Mm -hmm. But we just need that expertise that you have to like really push us to the next level to make sure that we're doing the right things and and, um, just 
be as effective and efficient as possible with the team members that they have. Mm -hmm. So um, I may be doing a little bit more of that, okay. you know, um, and like we'll consulting. see what, mm -hmm, Yeah, so mm -hmm. consulting for actual um, businesses and companies that are doing internal events. Gotcha. Um, Anything we'll else? See. I know at one point you were, I, I don't know if you were considering it or you were looking at it like getting your own event space. Would you still do that or has uh, Tori scared you? Um, <laughs> no, it seems cool not in the you. beginning, like, but like, when you really start thinking about it, it's uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a lot. Um, it's a lot, but. so there are things that I have done with uh, different event spaces. So, um, there was a venue in North Georgia, um, and this was on the wedding side as well. So, my company came in and we did two seasons, so two years in a sense, of all of their weddings. So, we started their um, wedding program. Mm -hmm. So they hired companies on and they worked hand in hand with us to basically get their program up and running. Um, and again, that was just that aspect that we mm -hmm. worked on. But they had also like food and beverage and then they had the space rental and sales and all of these different things. Um, I don't know if my legacy per se is to um, be this massive empire. Right. Um, I the older that I get, the more I want to rest, mm -hmm. the more I love my home, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it is a sanctuary and I like. Mm. yeah for you know sure. so um i don't know if my next level is to be busier and to have this full calendar of things and more responsibility because as of right now my overhead is really low in life and business yeah. i like it that I way like that. with the okay. bank account real I like fast. That. so I that's like that's that. I, I like my life yeah. so we'll see what my what my next thing is but it'll be more of um passion and heart projects versus mm. it having to be like a hustle and bustle and I need to provide this thing to the world. Yeah. I'll leave that to Chance. Bless you. <laughs> <laughs> it's definitely what you Ashley Shan, said. Ashley is amazing. Yeah, for sure. We worked Thank with Ashley you. for years and she she's amazing. She's mm -hmm. she's one of the event producers that I work with that I really have a passion for. She's she's amazing. Yeah, yeah. you really she's are. thorough too now. Until yeah, she get in beast bro. mode and she, like, she get in beast uh, mode too. <laughs> but it's I levels. understand it. I'm levels. I'm yes, layered. Sure. Yes. She get in beast mode. I like I'm them bald ass right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I, I say, Keisha, you go talk to her. I, I talk to her right now. Yeah. And I think I think what's cool about Ashley, like, uh, and she may ruffle some feathers, mm -hmm. but you cannot say you don't respect her. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Right. Like she she demands respect. Right. Command, commands uh respect. Mm -hmm. And like really everything you do is just flawless. So mm -hmm. I've it's been a it's been a pleasure to like know you and rock with you. Are you still accepting like DM slides right now at the time of this recording? <laughs> DM slides for events. Absolutely. We can have those conversations. Actually, I know exactly talk, what you're talking you about, talk Chance, about. but <laughs> I mean that's events. a whole nother party. Listen, the sanctuary get cold sometimes. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> he work. The heat works. <laughs> and I have weighted blankets as well. <laughs> Keeps me nice and warm. I love it. <laughs> Yo, thank y'all for this conversation, man. I've I've learned a lot. Um, I'm now reconsidering events <laughs> as a as a strategy for my business because there's so many <laughs> things to consider. And we haven't even we're talking about like the back end logistical stuff, right? But mm -hmm. there's a whole nother role in filling the building. Yeah. You know what I mean? Which is a that's a that's a whole nother stress. So some of you all, unless it's like a wedding or something like that, but if it's an event, you all might feel the pressure and frustration and stress of me, the person doing the event, because I want everything right, but I'm still frustrated and I'm nervous about these ticket sales. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I'm losing money if I don't have enough ticket sales. Mm -hmm. So now y'all might start feeling this. Uh, let's, let's cut that let's back. Cut it, let's cut that. Back. Okay, do we gotta have that? Mm -hmm. nah, let's just yep. let's just cut yep. that back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, it's it's a, it's just a stressful event. However, um, if you have the heart for it, and or if you have a heart for people, and you really want to feed people with an experience, especially nowadays, people need experiences with other people. We need. Mm -hmm community we need to be outside we need to be at somewhere where um, everything is flowing and especially we can touch on this too um people call black events in the way black events are run it's a conversation that i don't enjoy hearing however we do have some issues in that area like when you go to i mean not every other other culture event is like super smooth 
but those, but some of them are. A lot of them are that I've I've gone to, and um, I think you all are really setting the bar and setting the stage. What I will say about that, I agree to a mm -hmm. certain extent. Mm -hmm. I think for me, I try to go the extra mile and work even harder for sure to ha not have that stigma, you know, because they do already have it about us yes. black people anyway. Yeah, absolutely. I feel it when I go into certain places and, and work with certain people, they're already looking at me when I come in the door because I'm the black girl, mm -hmm. yes. you know? So yes. it's like, I, I have to be sharp and on point because I don't want them to be like, aha, uh -huh, mm -hmm. I told yeah. you, yeah. you know, uh, whatever the case may be. So I think I, for me, I, I go just as hard. Yeah. Just yeah. to not yeah. have that when it comes to I others. Agree. Yeah. But then also with us, because I, I, don't, I don't I don't like that. Absolutely. I think we're our worst own worst enemy because yeah. I feel like they expect our people expect more from us mm -hmm. yeah. at a discounted rate because they feel like we're the same. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. yeah, so, we, we can't afford no mistakes. Right. <laughs> None right. at all. Coming in as a black business, we can't afford no mistakes, especially during technology. Mm -hmm. Right. Because they don't expect for us to be here. Right. They don't but expect for us to can do this type of work. Yeah. I yeah. also think it's on how we it handle if we do make a mistake yeah, because absolutely. everybody's human. I'm not yep. going to mm -hmm. sit up here on this couch and say I've never made a mistake right? Mm -hmm. because that would be a lie. I mm -hmm. have made mistakes, but what I do is I address them head on right? Mm -hmm. right. and I try to deal with the issue right away. I don't like to let it linger or anything else. I just try to go ahead and fix it. I acknowledge it mm -hmm. regardless if I made the mistake or if my team or whoever yep. else, it don't matter. I, t I take full responsibility right. mm -hmm. and I try to correct the problem immediately. Mm -hmm. Right. Crisis mm -hmm. management. That's what I say. Mm -hmm. Like event days, that's all it is. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just putting out fires. Yeah. Everything is planned. Everything is in place. You have amazing vendor partners. It's just putting out the fires. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's what an amazing event produ um, producer will do. Absolutely, man. Thank you all so much for this conversation. Um, if you are uh, doing an event and you need the services, I'd love for you all to kind of just uh, shout yourselves out and let everybody know how they can contact you. Um, we'll start, uh, let's start with, let's start with y'all. Start okay. with you, Keisha. You be the mouthpiece, Keisha. You be the mouthpiece, Keisha. All right. <laughs> well, once again, Keisha and James, Event Audiovisual Services. We are located in the Stone Mountain Tucker area. We are U.S. international. We go anywhere. No project is too big or too small. Um, you can find us on uh, our IG at Events AV Services. Um, website. Website. EventAVServices.com. Mm -hmm. And I'm James. <laughs> uh, so thank you. Uh, thank you oh, yeah. no yes. problem, very, man. very important to sit down. I really appreciate the opportunity. Thank yeah. you very much. Absolutely, man. I'm, I'm just hoping like people are coming to you correct now. There's an expectation. Did you see the episode? Go watch that. Yeah. Right, right. Before I saw you as a client, go see what's going well, on. We we'll appreciate you giving us the platform. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Thank yeah that you. means absolutely. a lot. I really appreciate yeah. it. Thank, thank you. It's Y'all working, man. Yeah. Like it's it's that people are out here working and I'm I'm seeing y'all. So mm -hmm. um we got we gotta we gotta highlight our people that's out here getting yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Appreciate so that. thank you so Absolutely. much. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Tori. Tori, my name is Tori Williams. My company is Tori Williams Events and that's Tori with an I. Um you can find me on social media, Tori Williams Events or and my website is Tori Williams Events. Everything is pretty much Tori Williams <laughs> Events. <laughs> Um, I'm based here in Atlanta. I also travel, same U.S., uh, international, just wherever. I'm ready. Love it. As long Love as the it. budget's right. As long as hey, the budget's right. Come correct. Hey, hey, yeah. That oh, part. One more thing, the three-day workshop. If anybody's mm -hmm. looking to learn, I have a three-day workshop that's coming up in April of this year, April 2024. It's April the 18th through the 20th. Um, you can hit the link in my bio or you can go to the TWAcademy.com. And it's for people who want to be an event planner. Event planner, event designer, event producer. Gotcha. I'm teaching the entire thing. Love it. Love it. Nice. Love it. Lash. Um, Are you going to be doing your workshops? We may get back She'll to the She'll be touch and go with her workshops. Yeah. And I, I actually, am. I'm very touch and go. Right? I actually wanted to send, like, Kay to, like, the event workshop. And she's like, uh, I don't want to do event planner. And I was like, all right. <laughs> then I'll try to send my wife. Because we have an event space here. Okay. And I'm like, somebody just, and my, my wife is kind of getting into it. So, yeah, um, yeah I might have to send her to yeah. yours. And yours was, um, it passed. Yes. But uh -huh. you don't know if that's going to be your bag, though. 
I'm not sure. You're not I think, sure. It, but I mean, just like you were saying, so when you decide who you want to hire on or you want to advance them, or at least with running this space, um, again, that's something that we're looking to do. So more consulting than, gotcha. you know, just many workshops and things of that nature. Um, and really work in detail. As I stated, we worked with a, um, a venue previously to where we came in and we built out their program. Mm -hmm. So that may be something that we do a little bit more of. Gotcha. But, Hold on. Um, Sorry, real quick. Mm -hmm. Is one of your things that you're uh, looking for maybe some people to work in your company, like through your classes, right? You're yeah. training people up, teaching them. Oh, and I'm always looking for new people because mm -hmm. the the size of the events and everything that I'm doing is growing. And mm -hmm. a lot of times I'm doing multiple events, sometimes on the same day or throughout the weekend. Mm -hmm. So my team that I have now can only do so much. And I'm in a price. Well, now I have people flying in from other states. Mm. which is fine. So if I have other people here in Atlanta or if I'm traveling to another state, instead of having to fly my home, my whole team, if I have people that's already there in that state, mm -hmm. of course I'm willing to bring them in. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> and I, we can talk about that a little bit. I may have some um, team members that you can use locally and other states as okay. well. So it's kind of, we'll talk about what your needs are. And okay. I'll find a little Tori. Yeah. Right. little baby Tori. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. Ash. Um, let's see. Well, we talked about kind of like what the next level is or next step for me. Mm -hmm. Um, you can find me on social media at Ashley underscore Adana, A D A N A. Um, and then also my production company. I'm sorry, I'm... Adana. You want to say Adana? Mm -hmm. Okay. Adana. I just because I never asked you, but I was like, I know your last name ain't Adana, but right, it ain't Adana. It's your middle name. Correct, it okay. is. Okay. So now you know my whole government. <laughs> yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not going to shout it out. <laughs> <No. either. laughs> yeah. okay, but um, it's Ashley underscore Adana um, on social media. And um, also my business page is BEC Production without an S. And you can find me on either one of those places. Send me a DM, an email, and we can chat about how we can work together. All right, let's get it, man. Listen, we cannot close it out no better than that, man. Make sure... If you are doing an event uh, in Atlanta or anywhere in the country, reach out to these individuals because uh, they may be able to help you, whether it's virtual, long distance, uh, you know, just just reach out to the professionals um, and and uh, do yourself a favor. Go get you some social proof, meaning go build something, build it really, really big, but then come back to your community to teach other people how you did it. It's the only way our community grows. All right. We are out of here. Peace. If you like the video that you just watched, click this one. You're going to like this one, maybe even more. Click it right now.